A lot of things that you experience and learn in Albion Online can be applied to the real world, and today's video is all about real life lessons that you've probably learned from playing Albion Online. So one of the first things you do in Albion Online is you go to the tutorial, right? Which is kind of like going to school in real life, but those that have done the tutorial know that there's a way to make some good money in the tutorial section, and that is either stocking up on mules before leaving the tutorial, or grabbing as many rough stones as possible before leaving. Now, there's really not a big similarity to real life than this, though in school, do you know those kids that would sell candy bars or food or like Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh cards for a huge markup? It's something quite like that, I suppose, maybe, kinda, sorta. And then once you're out of the tutorial, or you're out of school rather, you, uh, you need to go get a job in real life and work somewhere for some basic spending money, or in Albion you need to do one of several activities to make silver, which could be like doing your dailies, or doing open world mobs, dungeons, gathering, and so on and so forth. So you've kind of already made up your mind, hopefully in the tutorial section, of what you're going to be doing. Whereas in real life, you know, maybe in school you figured out what you want to do, or you're just a lost cause and you're going to try everything, which is what I kind of did. So you go, you work a crappy retail job for years, you realize this sucks, you know, it's kind of like an alibi, and you go do gathering for several months, and then you realize, man, this kind of sucks. So you start doing, like, dungeon speedruns instead of gathering, and you realize, holy crap, this is so much better. And then in real life, you're like, well, maybe I shouldn't be working a wagey job. Or how about things like shopping in multiple different markets? For those that don't know, in Albion Online, every market is separate from each other. So if you want a really expensive piece of gear, like an 8.3 like chess piece or something, or maybe a fancy mount, if instead of just going to your hometown, for me that would be Bridge Watch, and then just buying the whatever 8.3 is on sale, if you jump to each town, you can see which one is selling it for cheaper, and there is a lot of times where it is much cheaper, usually in Fort Sterling or Martlock for whatever reason, than it is the other towns. So you go there, you buy it cheap, and then you bring it back to your home base, this is the akin of real life of shopping smart. You know, you go to the grocery store that has products that are on sale that week, or you go to a certain retail store where there's like a, a, a big special, where they have to get rid of the product, or, you know, everything's gotta go. You don't just go to the closest place to you and just buy the first thing you see, unless you're just incredibly lazy or very rich. In Albion Online, the foods that you eat determine of the activity that you're doing. If you're gathering, you probably have a pork pie. If you're doing corrupted dungeons or regular dungeons, you're probably using like a cabbage soup or a fish or something. If you're doing group dungeon activities solo, you're probably using a roast pork for that life leech, beef stew if you want more damage, and so on and so forth, right? Whereas in real life, it's kind of the same thing. Like if you need to run, if you're going to be doing a bunch of cardio, you probably want to eat a plate of spaghetti before the day before, right? Or if you're going to do some heavy gym lifting, you're going to eat like a rotisserie chicken or something, right? It's the same thing. In Albion Online, there are constantly people begging for money in the game, in the towns. There's constantly people trying to sell you items that are also trying to trick you with mechanics such as, oh, this this is worth $3 I'm I'm selling it for $2.5 and you click on the item, it says estimated market value $3 million. But then you take five steps and you go to the market and you actually search the item and the item is only worth like 1.5 million. So you know right away that that's a huge scam, right? So obviously anyone that approaches you in real life, I'm not seeing everybody, but just about everyone that just randomly approaches you like in a shopping mall or in a, you know, a street corner or maybe late at night at a gas station or something, you, you know that they're malicious and they're not really out there to help you or to, they don't want the best for you. They, they're trying to scam you with something, right? And like, say, red zones and black zones, right? I mean, red zones, it tells you if there's hostiles around, but in the black zone, everyone's the hostile. And you know not to just randomly trust people in these black zones, right? Someone rides up to you and they dismount. That means they're, they're wanting to fight. They're probably going to beat you up and kill you and take your stuff. Whereas if you're out, you know, in the real world late at night at like a bar or an arcade or just somewhere shady in a bad part of town and like three or four homies start approaching you and you, you, you already know that they're probably going to gank you, rob you or, you know, rough you up or it's not going to be good, right? Uh, so you're pretty much on your, you know, you're watching out for yourself like in Albion Online when you're riding around in the danger zones, your eyes are peeled to the corners of your screen, whereas in real life, if you're in the ghetto, again, out, late, out at night in a dangerous area, you are hyper aware, you're looking around, 
you're not just walking through the parking garage by yourself willy-nilly whistling and making a big scene. You're being stealthy. You're being cautious. You're listening for footsteps. You're looking around for other people, seeing what they're doing, seeing where their hands are. You've got your eyes on them. And, you know, hopefully they don't, you know, do anything because of that. But your awareness, you know, alone can prevent a lot of that stuff. Whereas in Albion Online, you know, your awareness, too, can prevent a lot of that stuff. Maybe you grew up in a fancy pants, you know, household or whatever. You know, you had a lot of good, caring family and friends that introduced you to the world and helped you out. This is akin to having people that have played Albion Online for a while, and whenever you start playing for the first time, they help you out. They give you all these cool items. They give you millions of silver. They run you through dungeons. It's the same thing. If you grow up with a nice household with a rich family, and you go to nice schools, it's the exact same thing. Whereas if you grow up in the ghetto, you know, your family's not really there, you know, either through age or just other other reasons, then uh, you're pretty much on your own and you have to claw your way out of poverty. And this is akin to starting out being online, not reading any guides, not watching any YouTube videos, having no friends that play completely by yourself, you know, pull yourself up by the bootstraps and let's go. <laughs> But also, like, uh, you know, going to college in real life and, you know, sitting through professor blah, 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 sermons, whatever they're called. I don't know. I never personally went to college. Couldn't afford it. Wouldn't mesh well with them anyway. I hate school. But uh, for those that, you know, they, they, they go to college and then they get all these little, uh, what is it called? They, they network with other people that went to college and they go get their fancy pants office wagey job, their tech job their high earning job through their college degrees. It's the same thing in Albion where, you know, you put yourself out there and you join these guilds and, and you and you got these these people maybe helping you or educating you, maybe not, but usually agenda based, you know, just like colleges are agenda based, whereas these guilds are fit feeding you with an agenda. And then once you've entered the workforce, you know, become that office wagey, you're basically in these guilds. And they're making you do call to arms, CTs. I think that's what that means. You know, they're making you do all these things that you don't want to do. And then they're taking all of the profits for themselves as greedy corporations do. It's the same thing. Albion Online in real life, they're the same thing. And, and yeah, sure, maybe you'll make lots of money in these guilds. But you're going to be hating every waking moment. You're going to have to set that alarm clock and wake up and log in and do do the, the Zerg versus Zerg that you don't really want to be there for when you just want to be chilling out with your friends or maybe ganking with a few of your buddies or something. You don't really want to have to go and do this UTA and then, oh, you're not allowed to loot. How dare you loot? You know, you're only here because of us. Blah, blah, blah. The thing is, the real truth is, is, is that those guilds, they need you more than you need them. Whereas, same thing in real life. These companies, they need their wages more than the wages need them, you know? If everyone just quit, I think the world would be a better place. Just saying. You know, market flipping in Albion, where you go from market to market to market, you buy low, you sell high. It's the same thing in real life with, like, the stock market or maybe crypto or something. I don't know anything about crypto. That stuff ain't real. It's just make-believe McDonald dollars, okay? I don't know what a McDonald dollar is. I meant to say Monopoly dollar. But I'm keeping it in the video anyway. And then you have the big long-term investors, the guys in real life that they put, you know, money into stocks. They put money into building up something that will generate income for them later. This is akin to people that, you know, they 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 run their own guild. They buy their own guild island. They fill it with laborers. They do the farmland. They get multiple accounts rolling out with multiple islands for multiple farmlands and multiple focus crafting. And then it just gets crazy from there. You know, in real life, you got people trying to either, like, create something to sell um, in masses. And then you have, uh, like, any, anyone that owns, like, factories, you know, that mass produce things. This is akin to Albin Online having just bots that automatically farm your land and, you know, do your laborers and all that stuff. But, uh, yes, there's so many different similarities and things that you can learn, you know, playing Albion Online that you can take to your real life. And these are just some of them just off the top of my head. I'm Swole Benji. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to me today. Make sure you come back tomorrow for another video. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it because videos every day on this channel. I read every single comment. I may not reply to every comment, but I do read all of them. So leave a comment, leave a like, and I will see you guys tomorrow. If you want to financially help me out, click the thanks button. You can also join and become a channel member. Check out the, the members only playlist in the pinned comment. That's right. I have videos for members only and some of them are pretty good. Check them out if you want. Become a member. It's five bucks a month. Click that join button. Thank you so much for the uh, just helping me out. Think, thanks for watching. That, you know, that's the most important thing. Just thanks for, just thanks for being here, guys. 
I'll see you tomorrow. New videos every day. See you tomorrow. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. And there's a there's a Discord. Check out the the link to the dis. There's a link in the description with a Discord link. Check it out if you want to like you know hang out and play games or something. Right. Uh, anyway, see see you tomorrow, guys. Take care.